sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on you. Sway in the morning, Shay 4-5, Heather B. Talk to me, homie. Man, what can I say about my brethren that's here today? Mm. Honestly, mm. Uh, back in the 80s, um, when we were all, you know, being pulled into this force, this uh, movement that was taking place, that was the only thing reflective of who we were um, mentally, uh, who we identified as at that time. Right. Um, it became like a, a a portal for us to um, express ourselves and be heard and be heard by ourselves as well. We it's how we communicated with ourselves. You didn't have the same communication channels um, back then as we do now. So uh, the zeitgeist, if you will, of um, of the generation wasn't always shared. You know, so if I grew up in Oakland, I didn't know what a person was necessarily thinking or what they were experiencing in Brooklyn you know, or or Chicago or uh, Miami until this thing called hip hop started to uh, pollinate in um, every state of the country. It was just underground swell. And I remember it as a kid being mm. pulled in and excited, like it's the same excitement you felt when you was going up into an amusement park. You just knew it was like a whole bunch of potential in that park. You didn't know how you was going to play it out, but you knew by the end of the day, right. I'm going to exhaust this park. Right. You know what I mean? And, um, and um and, and we we're gonna have a whole lot of fun. Great example. And, yeah, man. And, and 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 so it was a lot of groups coming out um at that time early on. Mm. You know um, uh, um, you know, sequence. You know the treacherous three. You know Curtis Blow, Jimmy Spicer. You mm. know, um, who else can we name? Run Just some, DMC. Run DMC. They a little later, uh, but yeah. But know. I'm just thinking of the '80s for me. You know, your Run DMC, Fat Boys. Uh -huh. Um. Wow, Houdini. Um, yep, yep, just, Houdini. Just the list goes on and, yeah. And through Houdini, because Houdini were a little bit older than us. Right, uh, yeah. You know, those yeah. groups were a little bit older than us. Came this offshoot of a group mm -hmm. that we felt like, that's who we are. Yeah. Look at them young dudes up there that's popping and dancing. dancing behind Houdini. Look at those dance steps that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Look how they move. Look how they stand. Look how they dress. That's who we are. Right. And those guys ended up turning out to be a group called UTFO. Mm. Uh, you had the Educated Rapper, you had Doc Ice, and you had Kango. It's not sophisticated. It's and, awesome. and you had Miss, Max, Miss, Miss, Miss Master, Master Ice, Ice. Yes. as well. We have one of the original members of UTFO with us, the one and only Kango, ladies Woo! and gentlemen. And let me Thank tell you, you something you. about Kango and UTFO. <laughs> they were doing something that, um, in a way, um, you know, people, you know, we made, we used to, it was a time in rap where we made fun of rappers who used to sing. But from the beginnings, I always remember, you know, rappers singing. You know, if I ruled the world, no doubt. Imagine that. <laughs> I love all of the girls. Right. You know that's uh, Curtis yeah, Blow. Yeah, games people play. No doubt. No. Sweet G. People do for money. You know, all, it was one a lot love. of one, lo one love, one love. <laughs> You're lucky just to have just one love. Yeah, man. And um, and something that these guys did that they incorporated a a, har a harmonic and a melodic style mm. of rap, um, uh, with, with singing and rapping at the same time. So what we hear artists I always like to point out Drake. Um, because he's someone who has really mastered that fusion between rap right. and singing. Uh, but it, it's not the first time it's been done, and right. it's not the first time it was widespread. And I credit UTFO as one of the groups that helped bring that style to the surface and in, in, in the process helping to bring more uh, notoriety to rap music because they, commerc they made commercially accessible music at the same time. Kango's here, ladies Woo! and gentlemen. Wow. wow. That's Thank dope. you. Hold that up, was... man. I'm not done. My, my bad. Hold my up, bad. Kango. Forgive me. All right. As and, you were. Okay. And, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and in those times, just like uh, 
uh, Motown Records had that incubator system where they took artists through it and they trained artists and they groomed artists and they taught you how to speak in front of media. They taught you if you was a singer, they taught you how to dance. If you was a dancer, they also taught you how to sing. Right. Some artists played instruments, some people wrote music. Kango did it all, ladies and gentlemen. Come Kango through. did it all. I, yeah, I kind of did. All right, and then when you, <laughs> when you talk about fashion... You know, when you talk about fashion, you had to have that. That was an important component to the image and, and you know, how you presented yourself in branding. Kango wore a hat that said Kango. Kango did it all! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Crazy. And he's here with us today. Good up for Kango from UTFO, ladies and gentlemen. Salute. Thank you. Salute. Thank, Salute. Thank you. Thank you. You're missing something, though, Sway. Okay. Oh, here you go. Okay. You want to you wanna fill that in or you want me yeah, to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to fill that in? Okay. Oh. All right. And the other thing that was interesting about UTFO um, is, you know, when you grow up in different parts of the country, you're not. When I first came to New York, I had never met a person who was from the Dominican Republic. So, I, you know, it was a lot I wasn't familiar with geographically right. And, right. and culture that I wasn't, you know, privy to being on the West Coast. And back then, man, if you were from Haiti, if you were Haitian, Oh man, people used to frown on you for some reason. Right yeah. on you. you no, know, yeah, they used to. Oh, yeah. you're Haiti. you got the cooties if you Been were from there. Haiti, yeah. you know, back then. But Kango was one of those artists uh, back then who didn't deny his heritage, his Haitian. Not true. That wasn't true? I didn't. I, I didn't it's not that I denied it. it but I didn't speak you didn't on celebrate it. Celebrate? Nah, it. Okay. I, I couldn't. I mean, okay. hip hop is the only form of music that's like a sport. Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, we battle as as rappers. We battle as DJs. We battle. You know, break dancers. And as a fighter, you never let your opponent know your weakness. Okay. Mm. And unfortunately, at the time, being Haitian was a weakness as far as ev- as far as everyone's concerned. As far why as, is that though? So because wild. I, I agree, and it, I say it all true. the time. But it wasn't for me, and I agree with you, Sway. But for me. Why Clef was the first person that I I, I remember it. to just go fuck it and just wrapped himself in the flag and you had to respect it. You was like, wait, yep. he's Haitian and you, but you had. But to I couldn't more. do that then. He you did could, that in the nineties. Right. Yeah. All right. I came out early eighties. Eighties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, again, as a fighter, even even Roxanne Shante said to me, she said, if I knew you was Haitian back then, those battles would have went differently. Mm. Oh wow! And she's right. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? So no, I didn't celebrate it back then for uh-huh. that reason. I had another battle that I was going through back then, which was uh, making this planet recognize hip hop as a form of music. Yeah. So why come in with an extra strike against me and go? By the way, I know you guys don't respect rap music, but by the way, I'm Haitian. Why do that? Yeah. That would have been <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know so, why I thought you did because you used to speak Creole in your raps. As time went on, I okay. went on, you know, oh. and, and did a, but not in the beginning, bro. Really? Couldn't do it wow. in the beginning. It wouldn't have happened. So what kindled the switch? When did you finally embrace? Um, you know what? Actually, it was Clef that made the switch first. Mm-hmm. And uh, by this time, everyone's respecting rap, loving rap. It's getting Grammys. And when I say getting Grammys, meaning it's televised, because they were getting Grammys behind the doors. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It wasn't televised then. So when all that came out that way is when I was like, okay, I, I can say this now. Yeah, you can say you know? it now. But um, did you feel any regret or uh, embarrassment that you couldn't at the time or you um, didn't? I, I was shamed yeah. is really what happened. I mean, you know, a story that I, I don't share publicly is um, I was seven years old when uh, I was in public school and my mom was pregnant with my youngest brother at the time. And um, there was some beef that took place between her and another parent. And the parent attacked her, you know, and, and yelling at her, you know, you're Haitian, you're Frenchy this and so and so. And this is the first time I ever saw my mom run and I'm running with her and screaming and so on. And I, I from that point on, I'm like, yo, you know what? I'm not telling anybody I'm Haitian if this is the type of results that comes with it. Wow. You know what I mean? It was that type of hate, and it was black on black. Yeah. Black on black, right? You know what I mean? Well, why do you think, though, Sway? Because was it like that on the West Coast, too? Because I, I think we could all share the sentiment. If you were African, you got called the African booty scratcher. If you was Haitian, you got called dirty, and Haitians created AIDS. If you right. Was, that's another one that was yeah, said. Yeah, Haitian created AIDS. Yeah, there was, yeah. There was a I lot mean, of ridiculous. We yeah, man. Yeah. So, bro, we trust me, this wasn't something that a kid would go out and celebrate. Uh-huh. You know what not, I mean? not at that time, right? Not at that yeah, time. We didn't See, we didn't have... Have a big. I grew up in Northern California. wasn't a big Haitian community, so mm-hmm. I, I got ex, uh, introduced to Haitian culture, Dominican culture, and I didn't understand. Once I found out that the Dominican Republic and, and Haiti is on the same island, right? Yeah, I didn't understand crazy? why there's a great divide, divide between yeah. Dominicans and Haitians. Yeah, I didn't get that. Yep, it's, on the same island. 
Yeah. Like you could great. walk over you to You could throw Dior. a rock <laughs> and hit <laughs> Haiti or right, vice versa. Right, like right. And that's, you got Dominicans and they said, well, it's a skin color thing too. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you got Dominicans darker than Haitians. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, Huh, this is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. Well, yeah. let me, let's also add that today is Haitian Flag Day. Yeah. Well, that's why we're here. Right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Haitian and Flag Day. So I bought a little culture. I bought a little culture here for everyone. This is called Cremas. Cremas, baby. All right, you know Cremas well. Yes, what is I Cremas? Do. It is the Haitian version of Coquito. Yeah. Okay, it's, and it's, Coquito, Puerto is the, Rican culture. Right, the, the, that's the Latin version, version. Of, of this. Okay, and, and uh, what's uh, in it? Um, You know, I don't... Um, can you help me in? Tracy, no? Tracy, Tracy G. G. No, 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 no. She I never believe- told us Can about it. <laughs> <laughs> because of hating people like you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I believe there's rum in here. Oh, there's because- absolutely alcohol yeah. in there. Yeah, yes. it's definitely yeah. an adult beverage, but there's rum and then it's coconut cream. Oh, shit. Mix it up, and chill it. The company you- that makes this what? is Royal, Royal Cremas. Uh-huh. And uh, you can get that online. That's my dude, Ralph. He makes that happen. Royal and, Cremas. Yeah, I grew com. up on this. I grew up on this. You okay. know what I mean? So w- when when you have this right here, you feel like you're, again, in that culture. We have this for dessert. Yeah. You know, with dessert. I'm sorry. Like, you know, with the cake and a little cremas on the yeah, side. All the holidays. You know what I mean? All the holidays. Tracy know I'm Haitians an alcoholic. Know like, why she never bought the... Why we don't know about you knowing about this. So I want you to, <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to taste it, man. Okay. You know I mean? Well, you know, if it got alcohol in it, I'm not drinking right now. Okay. But. Not a problem. Well, I Do definitely it. want your feedback. Okay, cool. I want you, your feedback. You definitely got get my you. feedback. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just, I, 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 but Tracy's so, so, faking her Haitian. I, well, okay. okay, then let's talk about Flag Day. Okay, let's talk the about Flag Day. What is the Haitian significance? Fl- okay, so y'all know I got 1804 stamped on my left collarbone, so that was Haiti's independence. Becoming the first black republic. Okay. Then it took us two years to actually design our flag since, you know, we have our independence. And because we were colonized um, by France, we took out the white part to signify the death of European influence and of colonization. And then the blue part is supposed to represent um, the African slaves that were imported and brought to Haiti against their will. Mm-hmm. And then the red, I've heard stories that the red is signifies the blood that was shed from the war. But then yeah, I've she's also... She's done way better than I could have done on that. Yeah, I'm just got to applaud man. you. Yeah. Wow, I got some homework to do. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> yeah it's called that. Google. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. Google yeah. away. Yeah. It's called Google, Google. away. Uh, but what I did learn from, from you know, backtracking in this culture because I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. My mother and, and, and father born in Haiti. So from learning about the culture as time went on, I realized or I've learned that <laughs> Haiti was the first to fight for its independence as far as slavery goes yeah. and won. And won, yeah. Oh, yeah. And won. Mm-hmm. And so that plays a role in why it is so uh, uh, on the bottom of the totem mm-hmm. pole right now yeah. where uh, I guess the Europeans made an example of Haiti for winning, yeah, mm-hmm. we're not going to glorify this. You're going to have black people thinking they can do this thing. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And so, uh, hence it being where it is today. Yeah, yeah, I never knew what the hell happened to Napoleon's fucking terror reign. I was just like, yo, this guy was colonizing every single spot Except of land. Except for Haiti. And then when I was like, wait, it was us. Mm, it yeah. changes everything. Yep. Yeah, it's us. Um, so that makes a brother yeah, proud yeah, years yeah, later. Yeah, As a yeah. kid, you know, all that stereotype that I was dealing with, I didn't know any of this. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. combat it by saying, yeah, well, did you know that we so-and-so? I didn't know any of that. I didn't know that anything good actually took place. Not to mention, when I finally did go to visit Haiti, I was afraid to go because of everything that I heard. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know how, yeah. you know, it's... it's The jungles. It's the, it's, you, you're not trying to be there. Yeah. You know, I went there, yo, my dude, it is so beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Haiti is a beautiful place. Yeah. Um, so beautiful, beautiful yo. Yeah. yeah, it has the hottest zip line in all the world. Marshawn Lynch from Oakland is out there helping them rebuild Haiti. He's he's doing <laughs> hand to hand, like out there uh, yeah, helping to rebuild some uh, yeah. uh, some houses and homes there. You know what? Um, uh, Kango's here from UTFO. We celebrating Haitian Flag Day, but we have full force here recently. No and, doubt. Um, and brothers. we were going over the history and, and the sound and. I mistakenly asked him about whistle because I thought, I always thought that Full Force had something to do with whistle right. and that transformation album that no one seems to know about That's but so me wrong. and King Tech. Because <laughs> this was like one of the most well produced and written hybrid albums, if you Thank will, you. In, in hip hop time because Thank they you. were rapping and singing and doing both. And I didn't realize you were producing a lot of that. Well, whistle became an outlet for me. Yeah. There was a lot of things that I wanted to do. I mean, I grew up on 
R&B. Yeah. I, I grew up singing in, you know, in my, my elementary school, singing at the school talent shows and mm-hmm. stuff. This is before, before rap. Mm-hmm. And so when I got into rap, I realized this is simple. I can, what, all these songs I've been writing, you mean I don't have to sing it? I can just say these words on beat and, you know, mm-hmm. we can do this. And so, uh, so I went into that world. But once the deal was signed, you know, with Full Force, I was like, you know, I got a few songs I've written. Do you think we can make some of that happen? Mm-hmm. And uh, they allowed me to make Fairy Tale, ha- Fairy Tale Lover happen. Be my group. Fairy Tale Lover. Lover, Lover, me and you. Be my fairy tale. <laughs> I can't go that high. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. That's, that's nut shifting. Yeah, that's, 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 that's yeah, what you got to yeah, do to, make, to hit those like notes. Mm-hmm. And so, um, uh, UTFO <laughs> meaning the group members my, after a while was like, just stay there now. <laughs> okay, but okay, the UTFO. Well, okay. The groups, the, the group didn't really want to continue doing vocal stuff. You know what I mean? And I had all these songs that I've written, and so I used whistle as that outlet, that outlet to get all these songs that I'm writing out through them. And uh, coincidentally, jazz uh, from whistle, you know. I, he sounds just like he me. He sounds just like you know him, what I mean. So, so we just told the world that's my baby brother. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so what I mean? that was a lie. That, that, he, not not by birth. Jazz, not your uncle. <laughs> what the hell? He's his hip hop uncle. Okay, he's your right. hip hop uncle. Okay. And, and so, um, so I I just vented all my songs through them, and the transformation album, as you just addressed, was uh, the group saying, okay, you know what, we're we're done with this rap thing. Yeah. We, you know, we, we, we enjoy ourselves as vocalists, and so we had to show the world they're transforming uh-huh. from a rap act into an R&B act. Wow. And so half of the album was rap, half of the album was R&B, and the hit off of that was Right Next to Me. I don't know Right if you Next that. to Me. <laughs> <laughs> Which was covered a few times. Black. What's the first lyric on my uh, right? Um, wow. I'll, I'll be there one day <laughs> and you will be right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> but how the first song, first. Goodbye. <laughs> it's time for me to go. Wow, Sway right know his. Sway, Sway know his. I'll call his you in the morning so I can old. let you know. So I can't know sing, but let me harmonize. Yo. The way I really feel, girl, Ooh, to put your mind at ease. You sound good, Callaway. <laughs> if I don't, then who will? If I make it, I still want you to be there with me. He remembered. Oh, that's crazy. Let's hear that real quick. That's crazy. You, Kango's here. <laughs> this came from a hip hop act, Whistle, <laughs> who said hip hop wasn't about R and B and being soulful and being able to sing. You know how much I used to f- fuck off this song right here, <laughs> wow. man. Let me tell you something, man. Your shit, I'm okay, man. Why not, Let me man? Hear I'm glad yo, I can help. Uh, yo, listen, I'm because this help, song bro. was a rare jewel, mm. and not everybody knew it. So I used to use music, you know, as a form of expression. Look, you know, it's a lot. I'm thinking right now and you know um <laughs> i can't really put it to words but i found a song that kind of you know that's representative of how i feel about you i'm glad i could help bro and then i would play this song and then every night because i knew the lyrics i, I could sway y- swag oh, so man I- dude <laughs> yo kango on a real y'all swag was like ours because it was young fresh hip but also, you know, knowledgeable. You, you know, you was, had a link to the older generation right, and moving right. into. So it was all of that. You know, it was fly. You know, and when I had Full Force here, one of my big because UTFO was one of my favorite groups of all time because y'all did everything. Yeah, y'all encompassed everything hip hop um, was to be at that time. Right. And uh, when we had Full Force here, who many don't realize, but to me they kind of held spearhead the freestyle movement too you yes, know they did, uh, with, with lisa, lisa lisa absolutely you know then you had a lot of those uh groups coming after lisa lisa uh k7 and uh uh, uh who's some of the more freestyle uh, uh no sarah and tka, TKA and yeah. all those groups yeah. you know yeah. cover girls and all of that right right um and uh we had them up here and we asked them about utfo what happened with utfo how did y'all meet utfo long story short he was like messing with my, Who's my he? Girl. Kango. Kango. Kango was like, well, Kango was messing with everybody. But he, girl. Right. But he, was, he was a pest, and she told me about that. Yeah. You know, when I went to Mike, I said, yo, who's this kid? You know, Sean or whatever, Kango. He said, yeah, yo, he's, he's up at the school. I said, all right, cool. I'm going to go see him. He said, yeah, y'all, they're doing a dance show. I said, yeah. cool, I'm going to go see this kid. I'm going to see this kid right now. <laughs> yeah. I went up there, and I saw them, and they were doing their whole dance routine. Yo, they were dope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do they were so dope. Yeah. And after the show, Kango said, yo, I'm bring them to you. I said, all right. 
you know, he brought him to me. He said, yo, what's going on, man? And we was popular as a local band. Uh-huh. Yeah. I said, yo, listen, I want you to dance in our, you know, our set, you know. So come around the house. Mike will bring you and we'll see what's up. He goes, all right, great. And then Mike was shocked. And Mike looked at him. Mike said, yo, man, it's a good thing you can dance, man. Yo, that's B. That's Booby's boyfriend. He came here to beat your ass. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we met. And, the rest and Mike is was like, and kind of like, what? He said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good thing you can dance, bro. Yeah. That's true. True story, bro. <laughs> full force was coming to whoop your ass. B Fire was coming to do me. What's crazy is that when Mike from Cult Jam yeah. introduced me to him, you know, I put my hand out to shake his hand, and you know how big full force is. So yeah. B had his arms crossed, and he just looked at me and nodded his head, like, you know, what's up? I'm like, okay, what's wrong with this dude? And so I ain't paying no mind. I said, you know, he just said, all right, man, you know, go do a good show, man. So I, yo, thank you. And after the show, B was like, yo. Yo, kid's nice. Yo, 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 I like the way you so and so. I'm like, oh, he warmed up to me now. I didn't know what was what, what his intentions. You didn't know were. you was banging out nah, his girl. Nah, nah, I didn't know. Well, I, I, no, I didn't know it was his girl. <laughs> okay, no. yeah, you didn't know it was his girl. You knew wow. you was banging her out, but you didn't know it was, I was his girl. Banging her, oh, man. Okay, I was banging her. I was just trying to talk oh, to her. Okay, you know? I was just trying to get clarity on history. <laughs> just want to make sure the there facts was, are right. There was no contact okay. made whatsoever. Okay, <laughs> we used to watch, you know, uh, five minutes of funk and. Um, Freaks come out at night. Freaks come out at night, and UTFO and concert, and see you guys uh, dancing behind Houdini, and then y'all yes, came out. What happened with UTFO? Why aren't you together? Uh, why did you break up, and why aren't you together now doing these I Love the 90 tours, getting money with Salt and Pepper and everybody that's out there now? Well, the breakup, let me address that part. That part I can say comfortably. Um, uh, Doc left the group to start a solo career. Doc Ice. Doc Ice left the group. And uh, so that left the other, that left the three of us. Uh huh. And um, there was a little struggle even with that because uh, times were changing. Uh-huh. And so we're trying to figure out what are we going to do right now? Where are we going to, you know, I mean, everyone's getting hardcore now. The Jerry Curl thing wasn't, you know, the look uh-huh. anymore. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so uh, they wanted to get into what was going on into, you know, the whole gangster thing, just be a little bit more street, which wasn't me. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, that, it's that thing where, where, you know, you're either a lover or a fighter. I was the lover, dude. I'm not trying to, you know. I'm trying to do that. I, you know, I, I wasn't trying to do the thug thing at all. And so there was a little struggle, you know, with that. And so we were trying to find ourselves when that when that took place. Uh-huh. That's that's basically where the, the tear started, uh-huh. I, I, I would, in, in my opinion. Where was it at its ugliest point? Um, I would say, uh, man, ugliest point. Because you hear stories that KG and Tretch, you had to knuckle up in the park once. And did y'all get to that point? Um, Doc and I had uh, one physical thing that took place. But that was before he left, though. Mm-hmm. And that was it. It never happened, you know, between me and him after that. Um, there was always tension in the group, man. Yeah. Um, and part of that, like I said earlier, you know, I had aspirations of doing other things. Yeah. Um, I admired Full Force. Everything they were doing as far as songwriting and producing and managing, I loved what they were doing and wanted to do that. Um, the other members weren't trying to do that. That wasn't their calling. That, that wasn't, that wasn't yeah. what they wanted to do. Um, I went on and did that and did that successfully. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my first attempt with that, of course, was with, with was with Whistle, yeah. in which Howie T and I shout out to Howie T. Um, he became Howie T, you know, Howie, 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 Hitman oh. Howie T. But but exactly, he, put he Chub bought Rock on that. he yeah. bought the tracks yeah. that allowed me to write certain things too, and we just you know um, we we just basically build on top of each other and 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 did what we did with Whistle, which became both of our outlets. Yeah, and um, and so. Uh, the, the beef pretty much, I would say, started right around then. Um, you know, I've, I don't have a beef. Okay. Let's just say I've always been the, the business-minded one of the group. Mm-hmm. I'm, I've always been the one that sees this thing called hip-hop and go, there's more. And I've always attacked it. Yeah. You know, and so I guess the person that takes the most risk and, uh, and if he thereby gets the most success will get the most... Um, Maybe. Resistance, I, yeah, yeah, I guess. Backlash. Resistance, is a good, good word. Okay, I know you want to be politically. I'm correct trying to because, be, man, because it, it don't make no sense to me, bro. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone's making dough right now. Yeah. You got people that go to work who can't stand their job, mm-hmm. but they there every day to do what they got to do to provide. Did they feel like you left them behind, or, or did they think? Well, you I, got told you big le- I told you, Doc left Doc, first. Doc, Doc, Doc left first, right? Okay. Um, it's it's very possible the big headed thing. I'm yeah. sure. Okay. You know because it wasn't like I was trying to do all these things and it wasn't happening. Yeah. You know, what okay. I mean, I mean, I, uh, um, whistle six, um, song, the single, went top ten on the R and B charts and top forty on the pop. Wow! So and I, I was a rapper 
doing these R and B productions. Mm -hmm. I went on to voice, you know, doing uh, voiceovers and jingles mm -hmm. and so on and whatever. So what you're saying is very possible. Very possible. Educated rapper. What happened with him? There was a lot of rumors surrounding him. Um, what he was out of the group. Um, during the Skeezer Pleaser album, yeah, and uh, he fell into you know into, into drugs. Okay, and um, and it was, this was my first introduction to it. Yeah. I never, you know, I've heard of this thing called crack or whatever. I didn't didn't know what the deal was, and uh, we all came together when that happened. That wasn't something that we took on some negative tip. Yeah, when we realized what was going on, it was like, bro, get your act, you know, together. And uh, we're going to suspend you for a minute to, to take care of that. Mm -hmm. But once you get that together, you know, we definitely want you back in. And he did that. Mm -hmm. And he came back and we did the biggest UTFO album ever yeah. when he came back, which was the Lethal album. Was that what Cole wanted to be? That's correct. <sighs> yes. And we were happy to see him back, man. <clears throat> Absolutely. Everybody was happy to see that dude back. So were we. And right. actually, sadly, right after he got back is when Doc said, all right, now I want to bounce. Okay, and then you guys haven't been a group. What about Mixmaster I? Um, he's been doing his thing as a DJ in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. And um, legendary DJ, yeah. of course, you know, what he put together on, on Wax. It was legendary, and every DJ looked he up to dope. him. He's that dude. You know what I mean? Um, itching for a scratch. Uh, itching, itching for, for a scratch. That was Force MDs. That was Force MDs, yeah. right? Y'all had, um, what was the video? Uh, shit. Uh. It'll yeah. come to me. Okay, I'm trying It'll to help you. To yeah, split yeah, personality. Yeah, yeah. Split personality. Okay, okay. okay. Split right. personality was one of the sickest songs Yo, ever Yo, let me tell you what's crazy about that. Um, both that and you could want to be with me. Split yeah. personality was my idea. Yeah. And Doc killed it. Doc was. Doc killed pull it. Pull that Yo. up, man. We're going to go a little Yo, overtime. my man man. had five personalities. Yeah, we, split is just just two. Split yeah, and half. Yeah. Doc pulled out five, five and killed it. Listen to this song. What year was this made, probably? 86. 86. Listen, okay. We're going we gonna a little overtime. Sway in the morning. Shave for right. five. <laughs> Apology is not my fault. It's the person inside, inside of me. Split personality, UTFO. Yes, sir. We got Kango here. Okay, so. We're going to do one more break and open up these phone lines real quick, man. I'm trying to get to the core of why isn't UTFO together. Ooh, have, have you got here? Okay, so let me <laughs> ask you this. Have you reached out to Doc Ice? Or? Absolutely. Oh, that's been done. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I got emails to prove it, texts. Did he respond? Facebook messages. Now, you can see that, especially with the Facebook message, you can see that it's been read. No response. What, what do you think he's... I don't even know if he's angry. Maybe he's just over it. Maybe, you know, it's a different stage of life. I don't want to have nothing to do with those dudes. That was a phase. Well, I know he's content right now with uh, being out with Houdini. He still okay. he t tours with Houdini now. Okay. So Doc Ice is so sick, though, man. That dude was one of the most – it's a lot of uh, under-acknowledged MCs that have come up along the way. He was one of them that just, just – what, What's incredible about Doc is that he wasn't a rapper when uh -huh. he joined the group. Uh -huh. He was my dance partner. Me and E were the two rivals okay. as to who's gonna, you know, who, who's the best in East Flatbush as, as rappers. And Doc came in as my dancer, and uh, e and E and E and I would write, you know, stuff for Doc in, very early in the beginning when we were UFO before yeah. we were UTFO. UFO, okay. And uh, when Doc started writing, beast. Yeah, beast. What did UTFO stand for? Untouchable Force Organization. Okay. Now, mind you, that's three words, um, and the acronym should have just been UFO, uh -huh. but there was a group in Europe called UFO, and we couldn't use that. So the label, uh, and we, everyone decided to stick the T in there. I hated it. Okay. I was like, you know, un is not a word. I'm like, what are we doing? Okay. <laughs> All right? All right. <laughs> but that's what it was. <laughs> I was outvoted, and uh, it, it, it's, it's history. Um Educated rappers, uh, is he? What is he doing now? Do you know? Um, I, I haven't seen him in a minute. I know he went back to school. He graduated um, valedictorian. Of yeah, <laughs> that I mean, dude was kicking big words. Yes, like, he was. He took he took what Kumo D and them were doing to a whole nother level. Yes, he did. So um, the educated rapper title, you know, was real. Okay, that was real. Okay, mm -hmm. so back to why y'all haven't come back together. What what's been said to you? Nothing. How about okay. that? Okay. Nothing's been said because there's been no communication. How do you feel about that in 2016? Um, I got a little girl right now, man. Yeah. Uh, my, my baby girl is eight months. Uh huh. And uh, my first and only baby girl. You know what I mean? I have yeah. my three sons. My son's Sean right here. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, baby need new shoes, man. I got to provide. I got work to do. So I'm not going to let this dictate the size of the pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm on plan B, you know, reaching out to other cats and going, yo, let's all form a little super group. Me and do it all. Freedom Williams, Dinko D. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we're all talking about getting together and just start doing some shows together. Okay. You know what I mean? Jazz from Whistle as well. You know what I mean? So, and that's if the UTFO thing, which Boleg Lou, I call Lou Gandhi. Yeah. Because Lou don't believe anyone could do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. And so he's trying his best to put this group back together. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, Gandhi. Do do you. You know, you you, you keep I dreaming. Mean, I mean, I've chances are Doc Ice is going to see this. All right. So okay. what, 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 could, what would you like to say to him? Let's go make that money. Mm-hmm. Period. You know what I mean? If it, if there is a problem, address it. If one chooses not to address it and just go make the money, I'm good with that also. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to peel back the layer, Heather. I feel like Kango ain't telling me something, man. <sighs> Bruh, I don't you, know. You know what I would, you know what I would like? Yes. Call everybody in the room. Okay, Doc Eyes. And I ain't got to hold nothing back. Go ahead, Ed- say it. Educated rapper. What do, you, what do you truly think it is on their side? I mean, we know sometimes. I know when if, I'm, if my brother's upset at me, I know why. I may not understand or agree with it, but I will say a lot of it is that they don't understand. Okay. Um, one of the issues that took place after the group disbanded, nobody was talking to no one. My dough was 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 fine. I was good, and uh, it turned out that the UTFO name was available. Okay, I purchased the name. Okay, I didn't purchase it with malice. I'm trying to keep some Japanese dude from buying it, and we got to pay fifty thousand dollars to get it back. Okay, you know what I mean. And so years later, because we weren't talking, years later they found out that I owned it, and I said, Yo, I don't mind spreading it among everyone. Mm-hmm. But we, it, it's worth nothing right now. Let's build it back up. And the, the, the response was, nah, just give it to us. I'm like, my dude, I paid for it. I'm not just giving it to you. So, so, so how much so, did you pay for it? Uh, I don't, a few thousand. But it, then, then every year or every two years you have to renew it. Exactly. You know what I yep, mean? Okay. So it came up to a few Gs. Okay. That ain't a gift I'm giving to anybody. Like, yo, let's go make that worth something. Let's go make that brand worth a hundred thou. Uh-huh. Let's do some merchandising. Give me the money that I put out for it. And let's all make our money. That's a business thought. Okay, so that that's simple. So that's as easy that's as sounds simple. I, well, I, I, let's, <laughs> let's just say it's all arbitrary number. So far today, I spent ten thousand sustaining this UTFO name, right? right. Uh, keeping it uh, 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 uh keeping the ownership. Right. So let's divide ten times three. It's about thirty four hundred dollars a piece. Each, y'all, okay, y'all, y'all, give me that back. Uh, let's go work on it. Let's split everything three ways. Does that make that you would be willing to do I'm that? Down, bro. Well, I just solved y'all problem, man. Yeah. What, what are we doing let, here? Let, 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 you reach out to them and see if they agree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, because the personal stuff, we all grown now, so these opportunities ain't gonna stay forever, you know. But you're willing to do it. Yes. Okay. Well, wow, can go here, ladies and gentlemen. UTFO. Yes. <laughs> man, we got L, L. Boogs on the line from L. Ohio. Boogs, what's popping? Yo, yo. Did we touch it? family. Okay, what up, L. Books? Man, Sway, have a B. What's up? I listen to y'all every morning, man. Thank you so much. Man, I can't forget Tracy, Wonder. Hey, L. Books, yeah. man, we yeah. in yeah. overtime, yeah. homie. <laughs> <laughs> I got a P. Appreciate it, though. Keep this. I got a story, right? Mm. Mixed Master Ice married my high school classmate. So they was always in Columbus. Tango know who it is. Know who it is? AP. I just leave the initials right here. AP. Man, I remember 1985 freshman. <laughs> you got Houdini, UTFO, Sherelle, Alexander O'Neill, and Whistle. Craziest concert I've ever seen in my life. Then you go back, and Tango, and I blame you for my self love with the track. Master baby. <laughs> baby. Master baby. <laughs> My apologies, man. bro. My apologies, Classic. bro. <laughs> Thank you. Classic joint, man. Thank man, you. Can I have my citizenship? Though? No, because he don't know who AP is. <laughs> Damn, Heather. Oh, <laughs> so he goes. Hey, here you go, Andrea Pinnell. Okay, I can't say I know who that is, bro. Oh, it's gonna get scary, Kango. Uh, now, if he get to explaining, uh, I didn't nah, give he you said, the, no, he said, "Oh, who is the she?" Master married her, is what he said. She, miss, 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 oh, he married her. Yeah, Mix Master Ice married. Her. Oh, okay. Okay. Kango said he don't know his wife. Okay. All right, I don't know Mix Master Ice's wife. No. 
Man, y'all must have oh. fell out at the yeah, time. I don't, yeah, I, you got me. But yeah, S- I shit, mean, ISIS mad at you too. I guess. I mean, is, yeah. is it the whole group mad at you? <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Whole group. Yeah. Wait a minute. We just solved it. The whole group is mad at Kango. Yeah. Oh. You, oh. you didn't peep game? I was like trying to work through it, man. Hey, that's why I was just sitting here going, okay, oh. a one, a two, wow. a, 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 a puzzle solved. <laughs> Darn. Thank you, AP. I mean, uh, L. Brooks for telling me. Yeah, yeah, man, it paid off. Hey, you, you're a citizen. A sway yeah, you, you finally got a citizen. You finally let the light bulb go off and sway. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the whole. So what do we man, do, man? Okay. Well, it, it sounds like it, it's a, a room. It's going to take a few apologies. Uh, you know, uh, maybe for misunderstanding and you're just grown man shit, man. Basically, like, hey, I know the love is there because y'all shared the the experience that y'all had, but. It's just gonna take a closed door room conversation, maybe. And it's gonna take when everybody at one at the same time uh, needs the money. Yeah. That's what's gonna happen. That's what needs to happen too. See, sometimes like when you stepped off, you was good. I heard you say that. I was. And then sometimes another person step off and they good. I ain't calling this nigga back right now. I'm good. Mm. Fuck him. And now homeboy is out on the road eating with Houdini, so he good. So yeah. he ain't gotta. I I see your Facebook messages and I read your emails, but fuck you, cause I'm not responding, cause I'm good. I got three shows next week. So when yeah. when everything die down nobody ain't got no dough coming in because that's probably what happened too when you were good one or two Somebody of them may not have good. they weren't good and while you were out there shining they probably was feeling like look at this mother- motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> you know well man I, I i think your legacy is incredible i wish um more people could uh hear about it and be exposed to it and, and see what you guys uh created as a group because uh, even now the type of entertainers you guys were as utfo to this day um that energy hasn't been matched by many you know and then uh and listen hasn't. man uh if, if i give me their numbers i'll reach out i, I got it I'll you got you. it yeah, yeah you got course. my information i'll see i might get ignored too but i know it ain't because of me it's because of you they ain't mad at me that's, Look, wrong. That's, that's my I man that's, that's, wrong. that's my homie man shit <laughs> That guy's the That's shit. That's wrong. <laughs> that guy's so crazy. That's wrong. Cool. But hey, man, thank you for coming up here, man. Let me add something, please, yeah, man. Please, we, you man. and I talked about this um, in September. Yes. My Kangol hat is That's going right. to be. Yeah, you know, you, you right. remember? It's going to be inducted in the Smithsonian Museum. Wow. wow. Is that crazy? That's wow. Wow, you put Kango on a map. Did you ever get a deal with them? Yes, I had okay. a deal. It wasn't a monetary deal. Though. Okay. Uh, what was happening is uh, when. When I came out, they sent us a cease and desist letter where I was using the name Kango uh-huh. unlawfully. Okay. And they realized that every city I performed in, their sales went up. So they fell back on the lawsuit and allowed me to use the name on a year-to-year basis, uh-huh. provided that I do nothing to discredit the company. And that was 30 years ago, bro. And you still connected? Still connected, yeah. You still get free Kango? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, oh. I've had thousands of. Have you ever approached him about designing some special series? No, have? it's definitely time to do that. Yeah, let's get it, man. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, time, especially now with the Smithsonian. Yeah. yeah. You know, because that makes me also hip-hop's first product-endorsed artist. Wow, that's you know, great, This is before Run DMC and Adidas. Before Adidas and Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. Before uh, Sprite and everybody got jumped on board. Yep. Kango, ladies and gentlemen. How can people reach you on social media? Yo Kango on uh, Instagram, uh-huh. Twitter. Spell um, it. Y O. K A N G O L. All right, and that's your son right here. My son T Sean. T Sean, what Apple up, did not fall far from the tree <laughs> with this one. Yeah, I can tell. You got Writer, the, producer, got the studs in his ear, all that. Oh. Ciroc boy. Uh huh. Ciroc oh. boy. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know Diddy. Yeah, a little bit, you know. Can you call him right now? Call him. Right, call him on your phone. Call him right on now, right now. Did he uh-huh. good? He practicing for his tour. All right, all right. Uh, Kango, thanks for coming through. It's sway in the morning only from Shade Forty Five.